If you're going to say stalking, doesn't that require knowledge of the stalking on the part of the stalked? If you're going to say chasing, doesn't that require someone being chased? If you're going to say George is guilty of murder because he created the situation, then shouldn't you look at the situation? To put it very simply, as far as Trayvon knew, George could have just been some guy that was parked down the street, whom later got out of his truck and walked down the same path Trayvon took to get home. That was it. And for some reason, Trayvon confronted George. Here is a quick overview of the situation. Sanford, Florida, February 26, 2012. Sunset, 6.23 p.m. Wind speed, 7 miles per hour. Max wind speed, 17 miles per hour. Max wind gust, 22 miles per hour. Overcast with sporadic light to medium rain showers. Trayvon Martin was staying with his father at his father's girlfriend's house at the retreat at Twin Lakes. At approximately 6 p.m., Trayvon left to go to 7-Eleven. That is 0.85 miles or 1.36 kilometers away. He is on his phone with his girlfriend, Dee Dee, for the entire trip. At 6.21 and 54 seconds, Trayvon is seen approaching the 7-Eleven from the east as is consistent with where he was staying. He spends approximately two and a half minutes shopping and exits the store. However, we do not see Trayvon travel back the way he came when he exits the store. Instead, he spends five minutes outside the store while three other youths buy some blunts. When the youths leave the 7-Eleven, we then see Trayvon walking back towards home at 6.29 and 23 seconds. He will travel from this point, 0.61 miles or 980 meters, to where George spots him. Trayvon enters the retreat at Twin Lakes not from the main gate, but through the area that is only walled off by some bushes and trellises between the townhomes. It is at this point, at approximately 6.50 p.m., that Trayvon is spotted by George, who, on his way to Target, is traveling by car north up to Retreat View Circle. Dee Dee gives no indication in her interview whether or not Trayvon is aware of George at this time. Trayvon continues walking towards home, traveling east down Retreat View Circle when it begins to rain. Trayvon runs to the clubhouse under the mailbox awning. George observes Trayvon running and loses sight of Trayvon as he runs behind the trees that surround the mailbox area and behind the clubhouse. As Trayvon runs to the mailboxes, he loses his phone connection with Dee Dee. After a couple of attempts to call her back, she ends up calling him back and they are connected again. The time is 6.54 p.m. And again, Dee Dee gives no indication that Trayvon is aware of George's presence. George's suspicions have been raised by observing Trayvon's actions up to this point, and so, instead of continuing to target out the north gate, he turns south down Twin Trees Lane to observe where Trayvon has run off to. As George passes the mailboxes, he sees Trayvon standing around. George continues driving past Trayvon, turning east along Twin Trees Lane to the cut-through, turns his SUV around, and parks approximately 190 feet, or 58 meters, away from the mailboxes, away from Trayvon. Again, Dee Dee gives no indication that Trayvon is aware of George. The call Trayvon receives from Dee Dee at the mailboxes is at 6.54 p.m. and lasts for about 18 minutes. During this call, George is parked down the street and Trayvon is hanging around the mailbox area. At some point, Dee Dee tells us that Trayvon believes he's being watched by George. There is no reason given as to why Trayvon believes this. He happens to be correct, but why he thinks this 
person parked down the street has anything to do with him, again, is not given. The time is approximately 7.11 p.m. George has parked down the street for approximately 15 minutes, observing Trayvon loitering around the closed clubhouse for some time, and he has decided by this point to call the non-emergency number to police for them to come and check him out. Also at this time, Trayvon tells Dee Dee he is going to start walking. At this point, Trayvon again loses his phone connection with Dee Dee. Dee Dee calls him back and asks him what he is doing. He replies he is walking, that George is watching him, and he is about to run from the back because it's easier. She tells him to run home, and he repeats he is going to run from the back. So I said what's going on. He said this man is still watching him, like on um, car. So he about to run from the back. So I am I told him to go to his dad's house. Run to his dad's house. Go to what? Run to his dad's house. To his dad's house. Yeah. Okay. So he said he about to run from his um from the back because it's more easier. He said. Trayvon has passed George sitting in his SUV by this point. He's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, just let me know if he does anything, okay? Yeah, we got him on the way. Just let me know if this guy does anything else. Okay. Dee Dee gives no indication as to why Trayvon is going to run. All Trayvon has seen of George up to this point was that he drove down the street, Twin Trees Lane, and was sitting in his truck that was parked about 190 feet away. Again, no indication as to why Trayvon feels George is watching him or why he feels the need to run is given to us. At 7.11 and 40 seconds, Trayvon runs east, then south, down the path, and tells Dee Dee he lost George. He lost George, but George was sitting in his truck. Just like before, Trayvon has run off into the dark, behind the townhomes, out of sight of George, and just like before, George goes to see where Trayvon ran off to. And when George reaches the path to see where Trayvon ran, he tells the dispatcher at 7, 12, and 11 seconds that Trayvon has run off. George stays on the phone with the dispatcher for another minute and a half. The call ends, and the time is 7, 13, and 39 seconds. Trayvon, by this point, has reached home, but no indication is given as to why he did not enter the home. Dee Dee tells us that Trayvon sees George and she tells Trayvon to run. He replies he is not going to run because he is right by his father's house. He said he ain't gonna run because he said he right by his father's house. She tells us that Trayvon says George is getting closer. At no point does she indicate why Trayvon feels he sees George is because of him or that he's getting closer because of him. She tells us she then hears Trayvon ask George why are you following me for? She hears George reply, what are you doing around here? She goes on to describe what she believes is a struggle of some sort. Trayvon's phone fall into the grass and she believes she heard Trayvon say, get off me. And she calls to Trayvon on the phone and she does not get a reply. And the phone call ends somewhere between 7.15.01 and 7.16. How it is, the struggle and everyone's personal belongings including Trayvon's cell phone, ended up over 300 feet from where it started, is not known. George's statements to police recounting the events have not been made public, and he has never spoken publicly about it. He has pled not guilty to the charge of murder in the second degree.